with, right? It's a point, but it's not really a point. It's a line rotated 90 degrees in space, right? And that's where it starts. So my my element, and my things I have to find a solution for is not limited in time and space and just for this one thing. It's basically, it, it builds this weird omnipresence, right? It, it's all lines, it's all points. And then, yeah, so the poetry is basically uh, the stuff that I'm analyzing extrudes and exceeds and, and sweats away from this point in 360 degrees, right? This is this is this is my core thing that I try to solve, and it's not just bound to one artwork. It's bound to basically I can you know take any point, any point on on any of my things, right? I take one point, and I can basically extrude and sweat and yeet another form, another plane, another line into any and all directions into space in X, Y, Z in 360 degrees per plane per axis, right? It's like my my brain is internally screaming and doing this on mic would definitely be very weird and silly and so I'm not doing this, right? I'm not that kind of insane yet. <clears throat> but basically locating points and stuff it, it it sounds so simple right but then again protruding basically on a linear basis you have the one one plane for your 360 degrees and i'm limiting this maybe four four is easy this is like horizontal and vertical and you have your diagonal so you have eight right Going from this, you have vari variations, and this is this is where things start. So cutting this, cutting the eight into basically one and two, right? This is your base. There's one, there's one, there's one. So you have all four in horizontal and vertical. There's your diagonal, and from these from these three elements, you have variations. You have this one, right? It cuts it into half, right? It's half and half, and you have this one, you have this one, you have this one, you have this one. So you have four more. And so it, it kind of continues exponentially because you can have any of these every time. And you basically can continue this until you fill your 90 degrees with basically logical elements. And this is where I go from, you know, drawing, drawing normal stuff to understanding or basically saying form leads into space depending on their orientation, direction, elevation. The surface of the form flows into this direction. Otherwise, nothing makes sense because I would look at the point at something static. I would look at the line at something static. And the difference being between this thing and basically this thing is, is miraculous. Because suddenly in my brain, this it's like a rail, right? And I'm the train choo 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 because the line suddenly is a, is a more dynamic element and it signifies direction. And it signifies <clears throat> motion or movement, which it doesn't, right? It's it's a drawing. The line is still static, but in my brain, right, I am moving along. Even with my eyes, I find a point and I'm running this down like like it's it's a roller coaster. Right? And I try to not just observe the line like wobbling left and right, but I try to understand the depth. That too is a weird concept, especially when you just look at the flat drawing. So again, I find a point, right? And I find a second point. And this is where I have to like engage the, the 3D thinking apparatus in my brain. So it's like I make, you know, and I, I look at it from a different perspective, right? And this again is another weird concept because you look at something and then spinning it around and drawing it is I remember being in ninth grade class and we a tech, tech, technic stuff class and we had a diagram of um, computer aided design stuff. It was a very simple diagram. It showed top view, side view, bottom view to build the thing in 3D, and I couldn't I couldn't see it. Like I was completely crippled and unable to like understand what what this thing is telling me right but like eventually eventually things made sense you know so <clears throat> my points being a and b behind b and this is on on axis of a is another point behind b and this is basically understanding the torso has a volume 
and I'm pointing at the front, and this is the, the boob front, right? The shoulder side. So there's a difference, right? These points are not on the same axis. When I look at this from the front view, I can draw a straight line, and okay, I can pretend it goes through both points, and that means they are on the same axis, but they're not. And technically they are, right? So they are on, on one axis the same, but yet there is a difference between the depth and there's, there's the one point that I was looking for. It's behind B. But in, in the deep, in the deep part of the space, I don't see it. Right? And I have to understand that between these points, I have the volume. And this is like the, the 3D-ness, right? Same with the nose and the point, wherever this is, right? The ear would spawn there. Right? If I have a volume, and I say this is the front and this is the side, in between I have to find my 90 degrees. If I find this one, I can basically find the force and have, um, <clears throat> it's like, it would help my brain to figure out what is the perspective. Because I'm basically overlaying axes, and we know this for the ellipse, right? Uh, I, need, I need more space. So basically, how to ground shapes into space it's basically you have to manipulate the space or the information uh, manipulate the shape add information to the shape to help the brain identify what is really going on right so you can draw basically a bunch of ellipses and the idea again is orientation elevation direction and you remove the elevation um, it's it sounds um, it seems not that important compared to the other ones. Um, and the basic idea is stuff leads in a certain direction at all times, right? Even if it's leading on a two-dimensional basis, left, right, up, down. And we know in 3D we have forward and backward, right? And I'm drawing these at a diagonal because I can't really draw forward. So this, this is the line going forward, but it's not. It's going down. And there again, we have the weirdness of perspective, because these are the lines going forward and backward, and then I, if I draw a line going up, it's still overlapping the line going going up, right, going back into space. <clears throat> and then putting putting this, what is this? Let me click. Oh shit! Move too quickly. Um, it, um, so looking at this again in a different perspective is basically. Having my, uh, what was it? It's not the compass. Technically, um, it can be a clock handle, right? I, I usually do the, uh, it's a, it's a 12, so I'm to 12, 6, 9, otherwise you have north, south, east, and west. What is this? Disagree. Yes, that, that it's basically the beginning. It's basically the beginning because at first, like the first, the first thing, and I, I put this into my notes. So copy image, paste. Why it's so big? It's so big. So the first, the first most important thing is basically how to 3D. There's, there's. <clears throat> There's many ways to get there, right? Understanding how to use lines to create the 3Dness, the illusion of 3Dness. After this, you have basically um, the main maintaining and maintenance of the form in space because you have a visual field. And your form can basically uh, penetrate and go through your visual field or remain more or less linear. This is the difference between the, uh, the the wide angle lenses and the the tele optic lenses, right? The zoom lenses. And the zoom lenses they flatten the space. The tele lenses, uh, the 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 wide angle lenses, they they widen the visual field to such a degree where the distortion becomes very apparent. And that includes um, basically if form moves past the camera, right, in certain angles, including foreshortening, which uh, it's it's a weird kind of, like, the concepts, and it's, it's complex, right? But the first step is just understand how to 3D, and then understand how to maintain your perspective, right? So that you understand, basically, this, 
would always be your top. And then you can decide, um, basically, so the box would go down. You can basically flip-flop your visual field by knowing there is a box you see from the bottom side. And this is where you play around with the visual field because it becomes an element, right? So if you go down from this box, down into space, you know eventually you would see more of the top plane, right? So if you move the form up, you cross the visual field, or basically your eye-level horizon. And this is where any form that goes up and sits above your eye-level horizon, basically above your eyes, needs to have its line changed. Right? And this is, again, it's, it's so, it's, it's weird, um, to kind of explore the complexity of, of, <clears throat> and it's, it's not perspective as such, but it's, it's kind of like you have a very complex object in a very kind of complex way of interpretation of visualization, right? Using lines. This is very complex in comparison to using values like just painting just because uh, for, for the value painter you basically have a difference between dark and bright is all you have right you have dark and bright is all you have right and this the difference between darkness and brightness has to create all the volume and space and structure and stuff right so that you understand there is something you see some kind of organic form maybe a torso in perspective and there's distortion and you i can identify the um like where are you in terms of eye level horizon right where is your um um angle of observation and this is it becomes it becomes a kind of monstrosity right because you have so many different elements that Again, like it's 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 not art, right? You try to analyze some weird kind of process, and it builds on the illusion to create stuff, right? It doesn't have to be art, and this is like I get I get stuck on this because, like like I was saying before, I don't have a single problem, right? Un unless um, <clears throat> my sense of understanding. Is lacking, and I know this, right? I I know that I don't know things, and by doing this, I eliminate these kind of things, right? And it takes some some weird level of raw analytical, and I like all these drawings, right? And you can say it's mindless, but it's not it's not mindless or brainless, right? There is a there's a purpose to it. Right? And it's always analyzing the process, understanding complexity, understanding how <clears throat> they, they will get to the real madness. Like all these lines, and this is basically where I like you have a, a kind of line structure, right? And you project you project the volume. And this is where uh, basically if I interpret the volume this way, and I identify the curvature and roundness. And you can even identify the perspective. So I am above, right? So my eye level is above this thing. There is a top plane that is not identified, right? I know it's there. It has a side, it has a top, it has a front. This is basic, basic geometry to have something go from 2D to basically 3D. I identify fronts and there's the sides and there's hybrids and variations and there's a basically top plane easy identifier. So I can use the same approach, right? Flat line, curvature across the shape, flat line, right? Flat, it curves across, it goes flat. To um, interpret and visualize a very basic volume. That's a flat line. No, clean, and curve, and it goes, right? To identify something very simplistic in 3D. That is that is something like the lines that I use in all their 360 degree glory have to like tell my brain what they do, right? So there are different lines, again, horizontally and vertically shooting across the form to visualize the curvature of the surface and the perspective. Right? And that is that is the weird thing. So the one thing, even the box, the box has curvature. And it is in perspective, and it holds volume, right? 3D volume, and this is all based 
on these elements and they are connected in a certain way so that the illusion of the 3D can actually work, right? So when you move away to something more complex and something organic, you don't really have a linear structure in terms of this goes horizontal and this goes vertical and horizontal and vertical. So you have these flip-flops, right? It, it doesn't really go diagonal because it's a box unless you want to, you know, put your box in some kind of weird angle so it stands on its, on its tiptoe, you know? <clears throat> And still, for the local space of the box, it's still our, and like, why am I even talking about this? Right? It's so weird. It's so weird. And there's, there's multiple kind of processes and ways I use in my brain to visualize the volume. And some of them are more geometric, some of them are linear, and then you have these, these section line approaches, right? And they, they too work in terms of horizontal and vertical and linear, and so you have your shape, right? And I can run these lines through. Right? And it goes from the one side to the next side. I can have the same shape and basically come from this angle and run the same thing through. Right? It's visualizing the same thing, but in a different way. And then I can overlay both. And again, it forms a grid, horizontal and vertical. Right? Now comes, now comes the weird part. When I have <clears throat> a volume structure, I can basically have my shape and the volume structure is not bound to the geometry. So it basically free flows and free forms across the surface in 360 degrees. Like basically any of these structures would work because it, all it does is visualize the surface. Right? And there's, there's no real, um, kind of limiting factor that tells me, do I use it this way or do I have to use it this way? Or maybe this way. Or maybe it's better this way. Right? They all work in terms of visualizing volume. Right? And then again, if I consider, like, the direction of the object itself. Right? And I say, this is my shape, similar to this one, and it's leading in a three-quarter perspective to the left side, to the right side. It comes from the left, and it moves to the side. And technically, this is me um, looking at this thing. Right? So there is my eye level horizon somewhere in place, yada, yada, yada. Right? <clears throat> so I can have my normal volume structure. Right? Linear flowing across the thing along my initial direction. Right? If I have a face looking this way. Right? All these lines basically would conform to the direction of my face. Similar to the box, and I, I destroyed it, so there's a new box, right? So the first plane leads this way, it always does. This is the lead, lead, lead. <laughs> so this is the lead. So the lines coming off of it to basically fill the plane have a 90 degree angle from its lead, right? The second plane, it also goes this way, but it also goes down because there is a different axis. Right? So the lines technically, they, they can't go through because the line itself, uh, the plane itself is folding down and this is where I have a top plane and a side plane identifiable. So again, the geometry, the geometry leads this way. It, it always does the planes and the surface of the planes does not have to follow the flow and the lead of the, of the object. And it's like, what am I even doing? Right? It's, it's the same thing. So I can have this kind of lead. But I can have the same lead in any and all directions, right? I can have my surface and form lead in any or all of these directions, right? So let's go back to the torso real quick. This is, this is where the madness completely, it, it goes completely bonkers, right? I have a, a spherical volume <coughs> in three quarter view. This is like my, my brain is completely, I should sleep. That's all I can say. It's like I, I'm on a sugar rush. So my, my form, my spherical volume is leading in a three quarter view to the side, right? Similar to the box. Basically, um, the default box. The first box that comes to mind is this one. I see the top plane, it's a three quarter view, and it's leading to the side, right? So there's no real structure, no, no linear structure for the spherical volume that I can, I can analyze this way. 
right? I have a very identifiable top, I have a front, and I have a side. So where where's the front, where's the side, where is the limiting factor? I can say this is the top and this is the side, and everything in between is something else. It's, it's the hybrid. I call this hybrid. Basically, if you have the beginning of curvature, you have a hybrid plane between the two. Right? It shows the beginning of the curvature. So there's the roundness. Right? And I can have the same thing between the front and the side. And I can have the same between the top and the front. So the, these are the hybrids. So again, front, I can have a front, I can have a top, and between, I have hybrids. But I have a front hybrid, I have a top hybrid, I have this guy, whatever this is, because this one is weird because me as the observer, I'm looking straight at it, right? So this is the only flat plane that I can have. Every other planes, they have to show the curvature and the roundness. So basically that I know I'm not looking at a flat box, and then there's another box, and there's another plane, box plane, right? So there is a, I basically have to build many, many hybrids to understand that it's actually round. So that, you know, so there, there's this. And still, I have to understand there is, like, the form is leading in a certain direction. I have angle of observation. The surface of the form is completely independent. And there's why <laughs> there was some kind of weird mathematic equation in this thing. I shall I shall permit permit you again. <clears throat> so the spatial geometry flow, right, is completely linear. This is always a grid, but I have the grid, and then it offshoots into something more dynamic. And this is where I have like the the anatomical surface is not bound to this kind of geometry, kind of rigid grid. Um, I would look at, uh, at anatomy as something very dynamic, right? So there is the grid doesn't really apply. Go, why does it? What does it show? What was it? It's like I'm speaking. I've been seen. <laughs> In a, in a weird way. It's, it's completely, it's complete madness. It's complete madness. Right? So, you have, basically, again, it's the process between, um, a kind of understanding, understanding, uh, the volume and then going step by step from a normal box where this one has a normal linear lead. Right? This is the lead. It's the leading direction. Le letter. Letter. Thank you, dyslexia. Lead. Right? Direction. Direction. Um, orientation would be this axis. Elevation goes up. And this is like direction, elevation, orientation, right? Got a, it's like, it's like homework. And I, I pieced, I pieced things together, like in, in terms of terminology to help my brain identify things, including, um, um, about axis. Axis, axis in terms of curves, they go along. They go along, they go against, and they they go across, right? It's it's like finding another word to understand direction, orientation, elevation, more weirdness. Anyway, so going from the linear lead of simple boxy volumes, these work in a grid, to then where you have um, basically more roundness, right, and more organic volumes. This is still linear geometry, and you can look at Basically, wireframes of spheres. We all know this. Most of us know this. We have seen this, right? These are made from plain square, square planes. There is one that is made from triangles, which is called a geosphere. It has a different structure. Compare the two. This is, do this right now. Geosphere, wireframe, Google images right now. Do it. Um, so going from this to where it's more organic in terms of it, it should represent anatomy. And this is, anatomy has its own flow, right? So you have different pieces of anatomy. And instead of basically being able to apply this linear grid kind of method, you have different elements have different kinds of flow. And this is, if I have a single plane of a square, 
and I cut this into pieces. Right? You can see basically the grid of my planes, and then I have basically the surface of the planes are not conforming to anything, right? Because there is there is like surface things um, that like they they kind of contradict, and this is like I I'm looking at two elements. I'm looking at a linear element of the surface, right? And this is usually a square plane. Right, it's not it's not completely square. It can have proportions. It can be skinny. It can be weird. It can have L shapes, but it's still made from squares. This is what I'm looking at: a single piece of of <clears throat> form space curvature. So, it's if you think about a cylinder, a cylinder. If you cut this open, is basically just this, right? It's a piece of form space curvature. You can see and identify the surface. It's it's basically like a ribbon, right? It's, it has its own surface and it curves into space, right? And it, it leads into a certain direction and then it can change its direction. This is what I'm looking at. On top of this, I know the surface, like this kind of stuff, can lead and follow wherever it, it's supposed to go. But then again, it can come and then it can completely go someplace else because there is a different element that defines the flow to um, basically where I have these linear elements and they all flow linear right there again is my grid and these they kinda how do I even put this like okay how do I it's like they they have their own orientation right instead of having basically this kind of stuff you have Basically linear elements, and then you have dynamic elements. And this is this is this is, this, is, this, is, this makes sense. So you have basically a grid approach to where the grid becomes broken to identify the dynamic nature of what you're trying to visualize. So the grid basically it becomes a lot more complex, right? So that it can encompass these different elements. And this is like the anatomy itself, the torso. The torso is highly complex. So during many months of study and analysis many years ago, um, it's like breaking down. You look at the anatomy and then you find a shape that represents this kind of anatomy piece, right? And you, you see me how I draw arms and legs and all this stuff, right? For, for arm, right? I do this. It's the first thing. It's the shoulder. This one goes outside. This is the, the, the flex muscle. Right, and then you have this guy leading across the elbow. There's the elbow bone. Right, this guy. Very simple shapes. This is the basis for my structure. Right, the surface. Again, the surface of these elements can lead linear. And this is where it builds the grid. Again, the surface, the surface. When when it should be um, dynamic, it can follow. The grid is again it's supposed it's weird, right? And there there have to be planes that come into play and some planes vanish and this is like the the complexity is nuts, right? What I have to identify again, um the perspective, like I'm looking at this from the top, and again it is in a three quarter position. On the other hand, I have <clears throat> mostly organic forms. So there is a there is a weirdness happening with the foreshortening because what I have for any basic spherical volume is I have to identify the side, the top, the front, the left, the bottom. This again is the grid. Right? So the forms that I have, they don't really conform because they flow in their own way. Right? And this is is basically um I can I can quickly oops pull up an image of um, something that helped me with this kind of stuff in in weird ways. Um, and even even for my own brain, it's like how to explain burn. Um, do I have the, yeah, this one should work? One one second. I'm pulling up some images from from Google. Um, 
when I when I used anatomy, and I remember having issues with with flow and and lines and curves and this kind of stuff. So looking at Bernie Hogarth, um, wait 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 wait, go to copy and um, paste. So he shows lines, right? And even in in his illustrations, you have basically he indicates the flow of different elements in its 3D-ness, right? So that you can identify what is in front and what is in the back, and you can see and this is this is very similar to what I did before with the cylinders, right? Because every element has its own dimensionality. There is a cylinder, so the cylinder itself is not linear anymore because it's curved. Right, and then every every piece of the cylinder has its own curvature, right? So it it becomes something else, right? But the the anatomy illustrations from Bernie Hogarth they are exceptional, and um, for why is this so small? Come on, give me give me big give me image big please. This one, copy, paste. Not this one. <laughs> copy this one. There we go. Like looking at this kind of illustrations, right? It it speaks volumes to me, and like my brain responds because it it enjoys seeing volume and in space, right? You don't just see the thing. Like I don't just see the thing, but I see the thing basically, um, you know, transpiring between two points in space, and it does so in a very dynamic manner. And this is like the layering, the layering between these elements is, is so good, right? And this is again the complexity that I talked about before because you have different elements and they all stack, right? And again, you can't go linear, so you have to go wobbles. And basically, every line, every line of this has its own curvature information because it's a cylinder there, there's a big cylinder, there's another one. So the, the form has to curve. Right, and depending on uh, how you want to visualize this, um, like there are different means, the different approaches. Anyway, so the like in in my in my doings with the anatomy and figuring out how I really want to draw, I realized that there is this kind of geometry grid, and then there's something more dynamic because the elements. When I try to draw the torso and arms, and uh, especially the torso, like especially 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 this this kind of this kind of corner this one like this this triangle it basically curves this way it leads down right and then it basically has a front that then curves up like there is a plane that comes from the front and it flows into the top plane so there is a continuation Right, and this is it's something I want to visualize. So my brain gives me some kind of sensation when it comes to drawing form in a certain way, and then I sit there analyzing how to draw the form in this specific way to, you know, please my brain and please myself, and then be happy with the stuff that I can draw. And the analysis to get there is is completely crazy. So I had to understand that I have linear elements, and then I have to have elements that are completely dynamic. And even if I have linear elements, or basically elements that appear linear, look linear, they are completely dynamic. So the surface flow going across and going through these is not bound to the uh, basically the linear approach or the grid. It's like like my my brain is it's it's basically going all the ways. It's it's completely. I have no idea where I am, guys. <laughs> Let me quickly rechat and I continue the madness. <clears throat> Okay, as long as the line has the same plane index. Okay, so the difference when you have lines, lines sit on the plane, yes. Once the line changes angle, you have um, option between your your surface changing, the surface flow can change. And this is basically when you have you pretend to have a linear plane and the flow should continue, but suddenly the flow shoots off, right? This can happen. Usually, angle, any angle change indicates a different kind of surface. So this is linear. If any angle changes, the plane is going down. Otherwise, if the angle goes any other way, it, you know, there is a, the plane continues. But it does so in a, um, how do I even put this? Like, it, 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 
folds around, right? It's basically um, between the box. You have 90 degrees. You have one plane, you have two planes. You, you don't see plane number one because it's foreshortened. If I angle plane number one, if I fold it, let's say 45 degrees, you see it, right? It's like this. If I fold it like 10 degrees, it's only like this. It's not even 10 degrees, but you see less of the plane. If I fold it, let's say, uh, this would be 180, somewhere above, maybe 130 degrees. It goes forward. It's like a hinge, right? And I'm rotating one element. And basically, I'm drawing, I'm overexposing one element. And I rotate the one element to understand what am I even doing. If I keep this up, but in a linear fashion, I have one base. And I have a secondary base. And then I have another base. And I have another base. And I basically fold plane by plane. And what, what does it give me? If I continue this, I have a cylinder surface. Basically, a cylinder surface visualized step by step. I can see the curvature. I can see basically the flow of the surface. Now again, if I, if I understand basically arms, right? I have the cylinder, the normal cylinder volume. It visualizes the 3D-ness of my cylinder. What it doesn't visualize is basically these different elements of my anatomy that basically flow across the cylinder in space, right? When I, when I have basically my arm angles, it's like this. <clears throat> so the anatomy, it doesn't go like this, right? It doesn't go like this, but it comes and it goes across and then it comes again, right? It comes and goes. And basically it, it flows across the surface. Of my cylindrical volume. That too is a, is a weird concept because again, I'm, I have this as my volume grid to show the box, the geometry, and then I have basically anatomy going completely in contradiction to this. I mean, this is, this is major confusion because, um, first maintaining, maintaining the 3D-ness is the key. Understand you have a base, right? I have, I always have a base. And my base for this is a normal cylinder. Then I have basically extensions. This is a volume extension. And again, it's not just the shape going fat, so it's linear, but there is a curvature. And this again, visualizing, basically turning the shape into something 3D is another kind of tricky thing because I have to identify a top plane. I have to identify a front. And I have to identify a bottom. Right? And these again are the simple like the main planes that I need to identify something as 3D. And again we get to where we basically have a cylinder as a base and then we have multiple elements. Right? The element itself is not bound to my linear structure of the cylinder. So it, it wouldn't, it wouldn't, you know, it flows across and this is where it just, it does so naturally. All right, I should uh, go away, take this one, right? So when I have these curves basically coming from the top going down, I know that there is a surface connecting this with the bottom. And then it, it again, it's the tricky part to have the surface flow and show how it connects to the side and then how it continues to flow basically across my volume and then it should still continue somewhere else. Right, and this again is the ribbon. I have a ribbon that basically continues in space. I need to drink. I need to drink. So again, what I'm identifying to help my brain is the bottom plane, right? What I have in this location is a basic box, at least so that I can identify a bottom plane to help my brain, again, um, maintain the volume. And then all I really apply is bottom plane, side plane, I have my hybrids over top, and at the other end, I have something that still looks like a box, but I can see it has a little bit more complexity, right? And at the at the other end, you know, this is where again the madness is is completely like I don't I don't even know because 
um, even though you have these weird looking bubbles, right? The surface, the surface itself basically twists around the volume. So there can be a bottom plane, right? And the bottom plane should continue across the surface of the other ones. Like, again, it comes and goes, right? Otherwise, I can still create a completely, um, let's say, I can lead um, the volume across these and there's my grid. Otherwise, um, it's like the, the question between um, do I continue the flow and the, the curvature or do I do I cut it off so that every element has its own and it's basically easy to maintain. I got a burp and my belly. So surface, so how do I how do I go? This one. Oh, this this one is nice. Oh, there's 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 a sexy plane. So between between this point, right, there is a very particular plane that leads. It leads very nicely into the top. And the fascinating part. So understanding when I when I say top plane, I have a very straight top plane, right? What I also have is basically if I change the orientation of this, I have a top plane at an angle. And this is where I have instead of Looking at this top, I have a slightly angled top. Right? So it's it's like a hybrid top plane that then it flows it flows into something else and then it comes it goes and I gotta let me see. Figuring out the inter uh, uh, interpretation. So at the end, I'm I'm looking at a circle radius, right? I have basically my 90 degrees and there's my plane but I want it to be dynamic so I have the circle basically it's if I if you have a circle and you cut it into 90 degrees into a little bit more you have something like this right and I have something maybe like this so I have a little bit more than 90 degrees and this is what, what I add right so that um, it's like again, it's it's the, the visual aid for my brain to identify the planes that flow from the front point. Basically, they go all the way. But what they also do, they rotate and twist around the volume of the cylinder. So this again is is completely nuts. So basically, the plane comes from the front, right? This would be the plane that is a box that goes back. And then it, it twists itself to the side where it has to build a front plane to visualize the volume. It's, again, these these weird these weird things of the process, right? I'm I'm having a volume. I have to cut it into a hybrid front, hybrid side, hybrid top, right? This is my front. This is my side. This is this is something else, but it's the bottom, and you can see how slowly something. It kind of like in my brain, it already looks like a volume or something more three D than you know. It's not two dimensional anymore because I can identify certain planes that turn it into geometry, including this being basically the front. You know, so twisting planes definitely tricky, and <clears throat> um, figuring out. Oh, this goes back, and then it, it like changing angles to have this curve around, and then this being on the on the side plane, then it curves around to its bottom plane, right? From this point, at this point, I'm at the same place, volume wise. I have to build a front that basically then flows into the rest. And again, I use these arrows, right, to um, kind of layer to give me layers. This is in the back. Something is in the front. Something comes from the top. It's basically overlaps, right? I have volume flat, volume flat. And basically, this comes. So there are some more, right? It's, it's like identifying what is in the front, what is in the back, and then figuring out interpretation in between. And technically, oh dear lord, um, this goes this way again. If this continues. If this continues, who's who's doing who's doing things? Thank you, thank you, Anonymous, Anonymous for the subgift. Um, so again, I'm leading 
this plane completely 90 degrees to the side. And then I'm leading it back into my linear volume so that it can identify the muscles for this arm. And at this point, right, at this point, at this point, I can decide to continue the flow or to cut it off. Again, like basically all I really do is continue this and like I have to identify the volume that is coming. Right, like the next volume and then the next volume and the next volume, maybe it bubbles and there's more things and more complexity. I need to drink more and I need to sleep more. So where where are we? There's more more curvature. What is my uptime? Uptime check. It's fine. So again, this is this is the one that I would continue. Right? And then continues all the way, all the way, all the way. Maybe I cut it off so that I can have another bubble, volume bubble. And volume bubbles, volume bubbles are usually always extensions, right? When you have a normal square, and you basically do this, you extend the square. But you extend, in my brain, I extend the, the square in three dimensions. So when I have my basic square and I do this, I know I have a bubble. And this is basically, I have a cylinder. And I have another cylinder. Meaning, the, ba the main cylinder has a top plane, front plane, side plane. So the next element also has a front plane, top plane, side plane, and all the stuff. So again, have the basic, the basic geometry between the side, the top, hybrids in place. To give me the... You know, the feeling for the 3D-ness. Otherwise, it's, it's not there. So, um, again, similar to the weird step-by-step -step cylinder. And this one also works. Move this. Rotate 90, 90 degrees. See, it works. It works both ways. And you can see, basically, you can see the cylinder, identify the volume, curvature, Yada yada yada. <clears throat> Madness. Holy moly. Okay, where's my where where is it? There we go. Am I still making sense? Is it still making sense? Did yes, the hand turned into a duck. Um, I don't try to express the shape with the least amount of lines. There is a minimum amount of lines. Um, to describe, to describe the amount of detail and complexity that I need and I desire. I need a certain amount of lines. It's not about the least, it's not about the most. It's, you have to use as much as you need to describe what you want to describe. Or visualize what you want to visualize. And it's like, there has to be a point to why you would use the least. Right? Otherwise, in my brain, and I, I usually have this weird example, basically drawing the neck. Right? I have this one, this one, this one, and that is. Right? That is the least amount of lines, but it's the necessary amount of lines. And it's like the key point would be, the necessary amount of lines to create the structure that you desire, right? There, there would be one more. But otherwise, it shows me the side, this one, and it also breaks the front. And in between, I know I have, I have hybrids, but otherwise, I have a box. Right? It goes all the way up. And I would have a second box. Side plane, front plane, side plane, front plane. Side, front, side, front, side, front. Square, 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 square. Volume, 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 volume. Including transitions. Yeah. <laughs> Am I still making sense? So when it then comes to, like, there is a, like, as you can see, as you can see, and as I have explained and visualized and confused myself, the layers and the amount of complexity that you can basically get into 
it's completely maddening. Like, I have no idea where my brain is, you know? I have no, no idea where my brain is, you know? And people, like, it's like, oh my god, normal people, you know, normal people and their memes. And I'm sitting here there, uh, sit, sitting there and here and analyzing my lines and going completely mad. And I don't, I don't understand this, this, this reality. <laughs> Like not really, but it is. It makes sense, right? And eventually, it works because, like, it, it's not like I'm pulling it out of my butt, right? So, amongst amongst the complexity, go away. There's too many layers. Amongst the complexity, it eventually works. Getting there it does take some time. And it's still it's still not over. Like like I said, the analyzing analyzing this weird element of the torso, and I know it was <clears throat> it's one of those things. And I was, I was there before, and now I'm here again. And it's like Hobbit's tail, you know. <laughs> you go there just to leave, but you leave just to go back. So what? Why? Why leave? Why even go there? So weird. It's confusing. I drink more. Any questions? Any questions? I mean, you are smoking and I'm sweating. I'm. I, it's actually warm. Okay, 22 degrees room temp temp temperature. Yeah, I'm. I'm a little bit sweaty. It's exhausting. All, all the brain juice, it's, it's oozing out of me. Any questions? It's not getting any easier, that I can tell. It's just getting more weird before it's, it's getting, you know? I gotta ad admit, um, I love it. It's, it's so weird. It's so weird how my <laughs> brain, response to this kind of stuff like every every ounce every little thing where i pretend or i believe i understand anything more than i did five minutes ago is still completely awesome like drawing into 3d space right you draw 2d but in your brain the 3dness the 3d space actually makes sense like it's it's a complete odd weird sensation <clears throat> Any questions? And I've I've not even touched the uh, the torso part that I I wanted to start with the torso. Or I mean, I meant to start with the torso, and then I, I had to explain what I'm going to explain. So I already explained what I'm going to explain by explaining stuff. Something. I'm confused, guys. <laughs> That's so weird. Like. This, this is, these, these, these particulates, these, these three guys. These three guys. Um, hip is very linear. Hip is very much linear. Um, for the reason you can, you can overlay or basically simplify the hip into a box much easier and much more logical than you would use a sphere. If you look at the torso, it's torso. It's more of a sphere. If you look at the butt, the butt is a, is a bubble. Um, the belly, the belly is a sphere, but the hip is very linear as a box. It's a triangle, <laughs> the panty triangle. So analyzing analyzing the curvature of the hip, right? It goes it goes down and around, um, and then goes left and right, right? Left and right is definitely boxy, and going around is round, but it's still boxy. Right? <laughs> if that makes sense. It's like how to fold, how to fold geometry. Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. Sure. It's always good to say you're joking. It's always good to say after the fact. Right? Even if you're serious, just just say you're joking to be safe. <laughs>
just to be safe. I mean, it works, right? It works, but there always there's reasons. Um, and I feel like I feel like from from my from my drawing skill sense, I'm better at drawing hips than I am at drawing torso. And I I have studied the hips more than I have studied the torso, for the reason that the torso has boobs, and boobs are very organic, and that is difficult. And the torso is also very organic. So it's also difficult. <laughs> um, meaning, like the, the way the way I want to draw the torso is definitely round, organic, and stuff. And it's anatomy, and it's complex, and it's more complex than the hips. So still, like in my brain, the the torso has like eight eight out of ten complexity. The hips has like three or four out of ten complexity. <clears throat> It's is weird. It's weird. <laughs> Am I still making sense? So that is that is the important part. I'm going insane. That is also the important part. Auto mode is fine, but you gotta un uh, figure out how to not use dots. Don't use dots because if you have a dot, like like. Dots, dots. See these kind of dots? They turn it into a link, and the bot don't like links. That is the issue. See, I could, I could click this. It's, it's, it's like an URL, but it's not. It's not. See, it's invalid. If you try this, the bot will definitely give you a kick. Time you out, probably. Where was I? I'm losing, I'm losing my layers. Unbelievable. Where I was, I had it, I had it, and then it was gone. Let's see this real quick. So analyzing, analyzing curvature, and this for me, it always goes in steps because otherwise it doesn't make sense. I mean, you can do this, you can do this because you're a VIP, you don't get bonked. You don't get bonked. And I think, I think it's confusing. Um, try, s keep a space between this and the, the question marks. But otherwise it shouldn't time you out because you're a VIP. Special, special layer. But otherwise don't. Maybe you get, um, banned. <laughs> if anybody else tries this. Don't, don't anger my bot. Okay? Okay, curvature, curvature analysis. This is, um, I remember Leo and, uh, Penguin asking me something about boxification. Right? If you look, if you look at a photograph of reference, of people things, and legs and anatomy and stuff. Right? <clears throat> Break down what you see at first into the 3D-ness. Squeezing it into perspective is the most difficult. Like actually maintaining perspective because, the, the perspective part is such a dynamic element that any 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 change to your perspective or you know whatever it would mean perspective would change like your entire structure maybe not entirely but maybe ninety percent maybe only seventy percent but it is a it is a complete I would give it the finger if I could right it doesn't make sense but it it's it's a mean pickup um, so curvature curvature analysis. Is a is a weird thing of just breaking breaking stuff down right into again it starts with your basic planes so curvature analysis for the torso and usually my arm any arm would be located at this place right there's the the kind of webbing between um, torso and arm and there's your yeah, arm muscles I don't know the names just so you can kind of have a better orientation. Um, technically, the front plane is completely squashed. Usually, I would have a front. Otherwise, the torso is, is it should look different, right? From the profile view, the torso is something like this, right? 
this being ribcage arc and from this point you have the front plane of the torso right this this tiny little speck triangle right is basically this entire thing right and the, the point this point that you see is basically curved across the surface this is why you see this right similar when you have a sphere and you overlay a square across the volume every line between the dots has to curve so there's one it's terrible i hate this how would this even look would it would it curve like this right you have your points and this is basically the plane it's like a tissue on the ball <laughs> or some kind of balloon <clears throat> So anyway, the analyzing the curvature is is the part that breaks my brain, and is definitely the part that, um, like, if I was on mic every day, or basically more than, <laughs> more than I am, <laughs> it's like I'm a, in in one year I'm I'm I use the mic one percent, you know. <clears throat> Like my my brain my brain can't handle it. it it can't like explaining things to you guys and you know being a good streamer on top of analyzing this kind of complex artistic bullshit you know there is a I I can't I'm not I'm not equipped. So the difficulty. The difficulty in my brain is basically curvature around two axes. In in short, right? 90 degrees. There's your 90 degrees. You have one plane and you have a second plane. The initializing of curvature starts with your hybrid. This is the plane, the plane between planes. Whenever you have planes, right, in whatever constellation, you can turn this edge into another plane. Like like any sort of constellation, right? There is one. If you have this one, you can have this one, right? So you build a, you build more planes for more complexity. For then eventually you have enough to capture roundness in 90 degrees. You have more curvature to capture 180. And if you want to go there, you can capture all the curvature to a simplified kind of degree in 360 degrees. And this again, I simplify this with very basic geometry. This is a circle. <laughs> Don't call me insane, it's a circle. If I were to cut every plane into its into its body, every plane would have a little bit more curvature. Which, which it doesn't, right? All I really do is I take one plane, cut it in half, move this thing up, and there's my, there's my <clears throat> complexified geometry. This one's, this one, this one, this one. Let's see, permit. There we go. Okay, so the curvature, the first part of the curvature basically goes around this way. Right, this is, this is the first part. The linear, the linear lead, the geometric lead of my form in this case goes down. Basically, it flows across, what do you call this, the profile, the profile backline. There's my, my nose, my lips, my chin, it's very ugly. <coughs> So, what I'm looking at is basically, this is my linear flow, and then the anatomical elements, they don't go down like this, right? Because they curve. And this is, again, they curve because they are dynamic, and they curve because I have a round volume. It's, it's, it's round, it has curvature, and it's dynamic, and it's organic, and it's not a box. You know, so I do, I do have curves. Even if I don't, I know every line is a curve. Again, simplifying to help my brain get not too much confused. 
So even though this is, this would be the plane, I know it can have volume, so it's all round. And then uh, basically jumping jumping back and forth, it, it's complete madness. So what I have is basically a flat shape that is curved in two places, right? From this place, there's my plane, right? But this part should go this way, right? And then I have this plane. Basically, it also has to curve around the surface, at least to some degree. So, this one is very similar to having the cylinder. Because this, from this point to this point, is linear. Le line, linear, like, like so, right? So if I cut the cylinder in half and then pretend there is another 90 degrees of curvature, right? If I continue this, this is where the cylinder structure, it can't really continue going up, right? Like linear up, up, up. Like it can go down, down, down. So the curve, like the surface of the, these planes, they have to curve, right? To show that it's round. So I'm basically having a cylindrical bottom and I have a spherical top, right? And it, it's like fusing the structures when you have all these linear planes for the cylinder. What do they do for the box, uh, for, for the sphere? And then I pretend I have a round top. So the, all of these, all of these are my sections. So again, I have this one going around, right? And I have this one going around. And in, in between, I have like all of this weird mumbo jumbo about geometry and lines and planes and all. It's like putting this in words. Like, like rewind, rewind all that I've said in the last 30 minutes and multiply this. <laughs> like, like, the brain, the brain eventually just says, nah, I don't wanna. <laughs> I don't wanna. I don't wanna. You know, intuitively, <clears throat> intuitively, we can use the quantum computing device we call brain just fine. If your limit is like limiting what you compute and calculate with, like by what you can put in words, right? I can understand far more then I can put in in words that make sense to anybody than myself, right? Like explaining stuff that is highly complex and is like, like, can can I have somebody like me that knows this stuff and can tell me about this stuff? And just so we can have a converse and talk about this stuff, you know, it's it's... Like, I mean, my, my brain is like, it's like stress, you know, it's a very raw sugar cube of stress. But yeah, so curvature, curvature. Um, breaking, breaking the structure. This is basically understanding I'm working with a, let's say, um, 180 degrees curvature volume. Um, and this is, this is the part where it goes away from the linear. Right, this going down is linear. In the front, I have my ribcage arc. Right, this is where it goes down. There's the belly button. Right, I would have ribs. And the ribs, the ribs themselves, <coughs> when looking at a normal profile view, the ribs don't go like this. Right, so there's the first dynamic element. And the ribs, while, while the torso leads down and forward, the ribs go this way and then curve to the front. Right, and every rib is basically its own volume that curves around, and then it kind of. Uh, this is where where things go tricky because I have the side plane into the front plane, and I have to break this apart and maintain the flow of my surface in space in perspective. While my lead goes down, I have elements volume, dynamic volume something something curvature elements that come from the top go down linear not linear and then diagonal and then it goes uh, let me just quickly um, I go into front this goes down where's my volume this goes down 
this comes down to kind of see so again the the analysis. This is where I have to analyze and just be very quiet. <laughs> so listen, basically listen, listen into my brain. Um, <clears throat> And what I'm doing is basically I look at this and I overlay in my brain, I have a normal volume, and then I overlay basically triangle shapes. And every line of these triangles is curved. And I I change I, I change and introduce variation to the curvature so that it gives me the right impression of the surface, like of the actual torso. And then I have to basically visualize the flow. This goes this way, and that goes down. So the visualization would change. And this is where I, like, I try to visualize the lead going down, but it also the ribbon or the surface of this curves into the front. So this is where I have to change angle. If I want to curve into the top, again, I have to <laughs> basically go like this and then around and then go the other way, you know? to have <clears throat> the continuity of the surface and doing this for, for different elements such as the ribs that also lead down and then lead into the curvature like I, I can't visualize this entire part in my brain it's, co it's a complete it's not a complete blind spot but it's so weird because part of this let's see this this is the rawness the like it can't it can't get any more struggling and weird than this, right? Because I have the side plane, side plane. I have the front plane. I know I have a dynamic hybrid between where I have to have the side separated from the front, right? So I have one element that splits into two <clears throat> that then gets a different angle because it has to visualize the difference between the front and the side, side front, you know, and still while maintaining the surface curvature in both axes where every line is basically round. Alright? And this is like it how does how how do I even you know it it's too much. So again if I visualize this simplified I have a sphere, spherical sphere volume and I have three points. Right? And between these points, I have a 90 degree curvature radius, meaning every line can be 90 degrees curved. Right? And this is, it's like the simplification process between this and knowing that it is a circle. So that I can go from, basically, go com from complete geometry, I can easily go completely organic by just curving. And rounding my edges, and knowing that every 90 degree curvature holds multiple planes that then basically protrude and go linear into space. <laughs> it's like it's like very weird kind of grammatics. I don't even know. So the the surface patch that I analyze, it curves this way, but it also curves this way. And I'm even even putting this in a different perspective, it's like it's it would overlap itself, right? So the surface, this like the curvature goes out and then it goes back, and this would go down. So this this line would basically complete the surface. It's like a sheet, a sheet of volume, a sheet of surface volume, surface volume sheet, something. Yes. So you have a sphere. And you basically cut out a piece. So this piece, if you pretend it is a sphere, still has to hold the curvature information. And this is where I go from this basically being a 2D shape to where I say, how do I have x plus something equals 3D illusion? That is what I, that is what I try to visualize. Step by step. Because otherwise it doesn't it doesn't work, or maybe it would, but I have no idea how. I don't think it would. <clears throat> that is that is the madness, and I, I I like I sound like a mad scientist. No joke, especially when I'm tired, because I speak and I speak and I speak and I speak, and I my my basically my face can't keep up. 
with my brain because speaking is slow, thinking is fast, and intuition is also very fast. It's complete, complete bunk. So breaking the plane, or basically breaking the surface into two axes, this is interesting, is a very tricky thing. I like this one. So within within this visual chaos, there is something dynamic, and this is something I now try to like. I extract and I dissect and I visualize, and it's this plane because it it goes away from the linear flow of the rest, and then it also builds into the side and into the top, and it continues all the way around the volume. This I, I like this one. I really like this one. So it comes linear, basically it goes, and then it, it, it bubbles out, right? It forms the volume. So the volume, considering it curves around, and of course it leads back into space. And then from this point, I would basically have the ribs, and this one, this is this is this is the one. This is the one. Look, 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 look. It goes from the side, right? It comes basically from. There has to be an overlap. There's a volume sheet overlap, so it comes from the back, right? It wraps itself around the ribs, so it would split into volume. And this is like I have to use a partial plane. For whatever reason, it's so weird. Well, my brain says do it this way, and intuitively it feels correct. Logically, it goes it goes against all the logic. So the plane that I have, and this is, this is the wrong, but I don't mind. So what I this plane, this plane I just visualized is a top, and it covers a part of the volume. Uh, I almost used the German word. Holy poop, it's seems wise. Oh no. <laughs> it kind of, it's like it's like I have the ribbon from the cylinder and I give it I give it a a roof. Right? And this is the, the first folding plane. If you think about a cylinder being rounded at the top because it, it curves it curves up. And there is a there is a it's like a partial plane. It's a partial curved plane. I like this one. So it goes this way and it goes this way. Okay, no, it doesn't go this way. Okay, it's curved. It's curved. It's curved. Okay. Okay, it's weird. Again, visualizing the analysis. Right? And it's like, like what I see in my brain exceeds the skill level that I currently have. Like to properly visualize the thing and again to <clears throat> like uh, what do I even see it's like this and this and there goes like there's multiple lines and all of these curves I see in my brain and from this I have to extract like the step-by-step -step process right to again understand this goes sideways linear there are other elements that go dynamic and then I have folding planes, and these folding planes only exist to visualize the curvature. And this is basically this one goes up top. If you continue this, right? And this is this is where everybody goes completely nuts because you have boobs. Oh no, boobs, bobs, boobs, right? And they too they are round and they are, they are curved, and then they sit. The boobs basically sit on the torso like this, right? But the volume sits on the sits on the volume logic right so you have the torso volume and you have the boob volume <laughs> it's like it's like a double bubble but the visualization process is basically the same right you have to figure out does it go linear does it go sideways does it go dynamic so you have these different planes this one this one. This one goes down. And I know that there are multiple hybrid planes. This one for the front. And it leads into this guy. So basically, what I have this one quickly. 
uh, where am I even? Okay, this one. This, one. this is the one. Copy paste. Rotate. So what I'm trying is to re-establish my symmetry and have a linear line to make things easier. So going f to the torso is basically collarbone, and I have the cleavage, and this is where the boob would sit, right? The boob. Okay, let's move the weird under. There's not a nipple. It's under nipple, and as you can see. This one particular curve, how how quaint, how quaint it is for the bikini line. Right? Like it's so good. It's so good, right? And still for, for the bikini the bikini line is easy because it goes across. Right? You have the symmetry line between the cleavage and the boot basically hangs down. And the bikini line always goes across. Bikini lines, panty lines, stalking lines, socks, they flow around the surface right so they show you the curvature and that is basically it every piece of clothing if you know if uh, properly applied shows the curvature because it goes around every wristwatch armband neckband scarf they all show the curvature right so when i when i do draw arms i don't go linear i don't go straight because i know there is a there is a kind of hand in place and it's round, and my arm is not flat linear, it's round. And it's 3D, so it has top planes, it has side planes, it has hybrids, and it has bottom planes, right? And usually, bottom planes receive shadow because light usually comes from the top. So this one gets a little bit of shade, and the other one gets a little bit more, and it suddenly looks more 3D magic. Anyway, <clears throat> where's my boobs? Where's my boobs? So there's ribs and rib cage arc. Rib, I, I like, I like the forms. I really, really crazy like the forms. And there's more dynamic. There's another dynamic plane. Um, remove this. Copy this one again. <laughs> move this over. Um, there's a plane. This one, right? And I, I can't, I can't visualize the plane without visualizing. But this plane. And the way it would then continue. And this is where it splits. It has to go around, but it also has to go down. And between both planes, it's basically I have one plane, and then I have another plane. And this one basically goes down. So what do I have between this one and this one? But at first, I have triangles. And triangles, triangles are really magical because if you look at the triangle in a different way, curve the lines. If you curve the line enough, you have a circle. Oh, it's magical. Also, also, <clears throat> if you have three bubbles, very tightly packed, look between. What does this look like? It's a triangle. But the curves, they are con concave. Right? They are like this. Because the line that you have building the triangle is part of a radius or a spherical volume. Right? So you, let's say you have an ellipse, and you have another ellipse, and you have another ellipse. So what is this? It's magic. And what I, what I basically see, this is like the flow between, the flow between these elements. The flow for the circuits is linear. But the flow between, uh, again, weird. So the flow for the circuits is closed. It's a loop, right? It goes around in itself, right? The space between, has its own separate flow. Now, if, if if we keep this kind of shape in mind and jump up, <clears throat> jump up to our torso, we have this point, this point, and this point. And guess guess what happens? Right? I have a curvature differential kind of calculation between the side plane, the front plane, and the top plane. Right, and this is this is it's completely magical because eventually there has to be a split between the side and the front. This is simple. Ribcage arc has its own flow. It goes like this. It can basically lead around linear to close itself and close itself <clears throat> at the bottom. 
And this again is something like different elements in my, in my analyzing how to structurize organic form, right? There are different kind of things that I would do to create the desired result, I suppose. So anyway, curvature. So there is a side plane. And this is, this is weird. Because this one is the side, but it's also the top. And then again, like, the difference, the difference hatching can make, right? <clears throat> I can do it like this. Usually, there's a logic, right? When I have a top-down box, I see it from the top, right? And this angle gives me all I need to build the plane. If I change direction, this is my direction. If I change direction and then follow direction, I again, I build planes. Right? So, when I, when I then, you know, wiggle around and do this, I know every change that I do in angle will change the surface or the surface flow. Or maybe both. Right? That is a that is a very particular weird thing. So again, there is my step, there is my box, and this is how I start because I'm um, basically forcing this entire thing into this perspective of the box because the box has information, right? This line is all I need, and I take this line with its angle and I clutter it around, and technically I have to space this, right? So. Angle remains the same, but it's forcing this thing into the same perspective. And then I take this angle and change it to show a surface piece flowing around the volume. And this again, like the concepts, the concept that I would use and describe, they're completely weird, right? Because it's like like the way I'm dissecting form is is it still natural or is it is it completely I don't know but there is it, it kind of works right so <clears throat> eventually and technically this this kind of part of the torso should lead up like um, if you look again at the profile view there's the boobs and that's not, that, that is some boobs there's the boobs so, this side of the torso is leading very flat. This side of the torso is leading up. Up is, is normal. <laughs> I'm sleepy. I'm even more sleepy. So there's, there's one plane that leads around. And there again is the weird triangle. Point, 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 triangle. And this again is a very weird particular plane. Because, like the way, the way it can be broken apart, or basically be, being folded, it has to fold sideways and it has to fold up. And then between this, I have a shape like this. So this one goes this way. And this one goes this way. How would this even, how would this even curve? If this curves down, like the linearity of this line, this line it can't be it can't be flat. Like it it feels so wrong. It feels wrong. This one will go down. This is okay. That goes. There's one. This goes back. Okay. Okay. I I. I identify the issues, but basically one of them is um, the the sides, both both sides of the surface, both sides of the surface. So this is it's very similar to having a piece of paper, right? You have a piece of paper, you have four points. You basically, take one and move it to a different location. What does not happen is basically a linear transition like this. It can happen, but it shouldn't. 
So what happens is basically it curves, right? And depending on how much you curve, you have this overlap where you see the other side of the surface. And this thing transitions basically into the other surface, like visually, because what I have is basically one element that is covering up itself. And technically, like, like the, the assumption that I'm making is I have two surfaces. I have the outside, outside surface, and then I have the inside surface. If I now say they have a different flow, I'm going completely insane. <laughs> because like the grid structure, if you continue the grid structure, you still find the same grid structure on the other side. Right? That is, that is the idea. If this one goes down. It's like I'm trying to understand the stretchiness of the surface, so I don't want to just fold it. But I want to figure out how, why would it stretch certain ways. And then still, this one goes down. Okay, this, this, if I have a cylinder, this would be my cylinder surface. Like what I, in, in my brain, I do this. Right? It's basically, I go from a normal width to something skinny, to basically something wide. And this is basically what the torso does. Belly button, there's the hips, painty triangle, hips, arms, ribcage, arm. So, there again is my triangle. There's my three points. This is one, this is one. This is one. This is the front of my surface. This curves up. This would curve towards. This goes down. Like the curvature. This, this curvature is influenced by this curvature. And this curvature is influenced by the others so that basically this going there and this going there would lead basically both of them tilting to the side. Ah, my brain. Why is why why does it do this? Why does it do this? This goes down. Okay, there's another triangle. This goes back. Why does it why does it do this? Why does it do this? Like in the front view it makes sense, right? And this is is another difficulty of this entire process. Like piecing together different things and then basically understanding a unique structure that does not change. When you look at it from a different view, right? Usually you have is one example where people are very, very good of drawing their OC characters, or any, any Marvel, DC, Disney character from different angles and making it look very awesome and good, right? And even coming up with new angles, right? And still creating the same character, the same nose, the same lips, the same eyes and making it all work, right? So there is a, there is a volume structure that I have to identify as a base. And everything else, like the female, the male, uh, fat people, old people, young people, skinny people, whatever people, dead people, demons, they all have a variation coming from this base. Like base, base kind of structure. I struggle to draw up the torso by using a sphere. What do you mean by drop? Um, you would need to analyze this step by step and basically manipulate or create this form step by step. Um, difference being you can start with your initial shape and create the structure within your initial shape. This is what I do a lot. What you have to do to basically identify things is go step by step so you know you have one 
one element and then you have another one and another one and another one and there's another one and this one goes down and there's again my triangle so I'm piecing together the same structure with the elements I'm not limiting myself to the initial shape but I'm building it step by step so between the step by step I understand you work with volume geometry right you don't have shapes and shapes and shapes and shapes you have a shape a base and then it curves to the back and this is what the volume does you have the front of the torso you have the boobs and you have the ribs and you have tissue and flesh and stuff and then you have arms you are not drawing on a on a plane you're drawing into space and this is you know your your surfaces they have to reflect this right so that you have a front from an identifiable side to then have a different side and you can see what what the geometry is doing right because it's, it's not just a box anymore like this right it goes to the side it has more information more complexity and it doesn't again it doesn't just do it this way it also goes up at an angle it then goes flat at an angle it has a wall it has a f whatever this it is a step staircase step by step right so you have different angles and then it goes flat and it goes this way and then it goes down so there's a box and then this one it all flows otherwise maybe it doesn't so again <laughs> identify identifying this kind of stuff you know step by step Doing doing this, I know from from my modeling. Like I was modeling step by step, extruding. I took a plane, or basically took an edge, and I extruded this edge. I took this edge and extruded it. I took this edge, extrusion, extrusion, extrusion. I build a square, build a square, move it this way. More planes, extrusion. A lot of lot of pulling vertices and polygons and this kind of stuff. So. so. Why is my bobs there? Okay, there's my bobs. So um, I would believe in in my process of of basically for this kind of stuff, right? Um, I will have to do let's say at least the next 100 studies that I perform to analyze the torso curvature specifically will yield 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 and net a specific percentage of understanding and this is basically um, like me doing stuff measuring is it what I want does it look nice if it's look if it looks nice I remember and analyze why it looks nice right if it's not what I want I analyze why it's not what I want I analyze where does it come from and usually it is in the lines, it is within the angles and the lines, right? Because the interpretation of basically every piece of the surface and how I move my angle across makes a difference between the interpretation of the entire volume. And this is what I have to identify and measure and then calculate and figure out so that I can basically... Um, there seems to be three things that play play a role for when curvature comes together for this for this particular area as an example right between these three points curvature 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 space in between that is cut apart into different elements so that this thing as it exists can curve into space right so that it doesn't it doesn't just stand linear as a triangle but it actually identifies space and curvature so between these things i have the curvature that i have to analyze which like it's so confusing it did holy shit excuse the language like bah! you know it's it's actually breaking my brain um let's say that the conflict between the logical part of the brain where stuff has to make sense and then between looking at all of this and being aware of why it's confusing and it doesn't make sense like looking at this I could stare at this for hours and hours maybe only 20 minutes 
but just analyzing and moving points around, seeing what it does, and then like before, it's basically drawing in my mind, or drawing in my brain, and um, going through variations of calculations, of different variations of other calculations, to eventually find the one line, the one angle, the one structure, something, something that I really want, you know? Um, do both. Do both. Um, go go with whatever you like, and I I do both, right? I um, the point being when you do this, when you start with the initial shape, this can be a very good exercise because you are forced into the proportions of your initial element. So you can be very thorough and very careful and make make your torsos like the human. But you can go out of the way and give yourself weird torsos and try to make this work in terms of volume. And I give you one example. Right? This is not a normal torso. But the way I look at it is completely different and it makes sense that this can be a torso. The idea is to um and this is this is a huge arc that I'm casting. Um, it's about proportions. Understand the dynamicness and the dynamic balance of proportions. Right? It's the same with the faces. If you only draw realistic, your initial shape would always be the same. For the cartoony parts, for the dynamic parts, and for all other cool looking faces, I would go with something like this. You know, it's very pointy at the bottom. And then filling in, filling in the elements will give you a very good idea of how good or how bad you are with proportions. And proportions are basically a very lovely thing because they are easy to fix usually and this is where maintain your structure. You know, maintain your watch. Like seriously, seriously, if you draw a face and you say proportions are wrong, analyze. Right? It's like it's not hard to see that things are either too big or too small. Or in the wrong place, right? And this is what I'm talking about. Maintain your structure. And even though I'm not changing the size of my eyes or the size of anything, I am manipulating proportions to the maximum effort. And this is like all there is. Draw a face. Keep your structure the same, right? This is like find, find a shape you like. And then all you do is place the stuff inside your shape. Identify what is awesome, what is cool, what is bad, what is beautiful, what is elegant. And eventually you come to uh, basically very great many variations. And you will have no issues drawing a face. Because all you have is you have one thing and you have lips. Lips have a certain distance to the underlip. They have a certain distance to the jaw. They have a certain distance to the nose. And this is proportions, guys. There's a certain distance to your eyes. There's a certain bump. There's eyes. And there's a certain distance to your ears. And there is a certain distance to the forehead receding hairline. Like, please. I like this. Why? Because I give you diagrams. I give you diagrams to, to finish the madness. Um, between real and cartoon. Re real. I want to draw this kind of stuff. Very realistic, not too realistic, a little bit dynamic. What I really want is the ability to understand the entire thing. And still, every cartoon style, every other style, a mix, a hybrid, anime, whatever, Disney, anime, Marvel, DC, comic books, something, something, for kids and stuff, all have different proportions. Let's see if I can pull this off. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, dear Lord. Oh, oh dear. Let's see. Let's see. You, you know this guy. <laughs> you know this guy. You know this guy. Holy shit. Almost. Homer Simpson. Proportions. Proportions. Like, eventually it's so simple. There is a balance between 
you know, you have to measure it yourself. When does it look bad and when does it look good? You can't, there's, this is where, where it becomes very easy to use reference because you can look at reference and then observe the distances between stuff. You observe the sizes of stuff, right? Like how big is your nose and how big is your lips and what is the space between? I look for the balance, right? Which is basically, this is my nose and it goes very pointy for reasons. And then I have lips that basically do this. Right? And it's it's not realistic by no means. Right? If I if I go all the way, right, I have look at this face. Like look at this kind of where does this even exist? But there is a balance between the sizes and the distances of elements that I had to basically go through five hundred, five thousand, fifty thousand drawings. Of drawing it big, drawing it small, seeing how it works. What you in the end want is not cartoon or realistic. It doesn't matter, but you want to be like, where do you want to be? Right? It can be cartoon, it can be realistic, it can be everything, it can be somewhere in between. And they all have this kind of identifiable, like, how big do my things have to be? How small do they have to be? In what position do they have to be? And that too is the proportion part, right? I can have a big jaw all the way out there. I can have a small jaw all the way out there. For me as the artist, ultimately at the end, I have to make this work, right? If I have my initial shape for more realistic faces, I have to make it work and decide, you know, what makes it and what breaks it. And ultimately, it's it's not pleasing to work this out, but in the end, look at your thing and move stuff. This is proportions. Because not always will you have a face where your eyes are so enormously big and your mouth is so crazy big that it's easy identifiable, you know? So what I do and what I did in my experiments is, again, I have one base shape. And all I really do is try to draw an eye that doesn't look completely ass, you know, completely terrible. So I pay attention to, like, basically, is, is the part of analyzing. When it looks bad, analyze why. It's, it's not something, it's not something everybody enjoys. You know, there is, there's no way around but through. It's not like, it's not like the mistakes don't solve themselves. You know, if you want to be an artist, if you have issues to solve in terms of drawing anatomy, drawing hands, drawing perspective, drawing hands and perspective, drawing perspective and hands, okay. Um, there is a, <laughs> it's not easy, you know, it's like a treasure hunt. And ultimately, it's like learning how to learn involves learning how to fix your mistakes. And once you understand how to fix your mistakes, it is a, it is more or less a smooth sailing because whatever issue arises, you know how to analyze, dissect and fix so that your learning progress is not slow and maybe even going back, but it is very steady. For, for the reason that you can identify why it is bad, why it's wrong, why it's a mistake in terms of like your own style, right? I have my own style. I don't have realistic proportions that I can mathematically measure amongst or along some kind of reference frame, you know? And even like all the dynamic, weird looking comic book things, they may be a variation of realism. And my issue being, I don't want to force myself to learn realistic. I'd rather understand the balance between proportion, right? The advice given to me by people better at drawing at that time was learn realistic because everything else is a variation of this. And no, and yes, maybe yes, but otherwise no. And for the reason you have people exceptionally skilled, 99% skill in terms of realism. And they, they can't, they can't go there.
at all. And all it really does is you have to take shapes and put them in different contexts so that the end result, again, looks visually, aesthetically pleasing. And this is nobody can tell you when it does this. For music, we have a very kind of intuitively attuned device. We, we can very easily and very swiftly fast tell when we don't like music and when the music is bad and it doesn't sound very well made, right? When it's done by an amateur instead of the professional playing the violin, we know how, what, what this word can mean, right? And we wouldn't listen to music we consider to be bad, right? Because it, it would just be icky for the brain. So still analyzing why this happens and what you can do to fix this, this issue so that, you know, analyzing why my eye could, maybe it, it's better up there. You know, maybe this would be more aesthetically pleasing. I don't know, but it's still something I have to go through, even for, um, oh, the layers. for this kind of stuff. <clears throat> like I have to know how do I want to draw my curves so that basically it pleases me you know to you know we, we all have our own standards it's not like I would draw the, the line I'm on purpose but there are times and there was times many years ago where I was just thinking about legs and I would draw the curve and I would draw it again and draw it again draw it again draw it again until I understand what do I even want you know, and wh why do I want it this way? And for like the dynamic nature, the aesthetic nature, the all these different visual elements that ultimately, you know, become this weird looking mumbo jumbo composed stew. And I call it style. But there is a, if I don't have the know how to create, recreate, manipulate, and still remain within this kind of confined style. You know, there, there would be a lack of understanding. And that is not something I enjoy, especially because there is an artist in me, right? He's yelling and screaming. He wants to draw very cool stuff, but he can't because he, he wasn't born with this kind of ability. You know, so going from, you know, you draw and you realize it's one way. And one way being either good or bad. And then... You know, we, we want it to be good, but ultimately I want to remember how to not repeat the bad. You know, as much as I want the good, it's, it's a kind of different approach, right? I accept the empty glass to realize it was once full, something. Um, and that is basically, um, eliminating the mistakes. And this is make one mistake five million times. And then you remember. How to never, ever, 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 ever repeat the mistake again. And this is, this too is learning and drawing because you go from 0% to ultimately the, the professional percent. Whatever this means, right? <laughs> whatever this, whatever this quantifies. But you, 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 like, at least to my experience, um, I, I draw. I look at it, do I like this, do I not like this, what do I like, why do I like this, why do I not like things, and there are, there are so many questions that are answered, and then maybe they're not all answered, but there is a, there is a point between eliminating the mistakes and remembering not to repeat them, right? Because all that there can remain after you remember how to not to repeat the mistakes is is this, right? It's this. Skill. Skill. Call it ability. Remembering, yeah, we can't, we can't flip the switch and snap our fingers. Um, like, all I, all I know from my own experience is mindfulness. Like, Actively contemplating the stuff, right? As like I don't know, I don't know it any other way. 
you know, I draw stuff and it gets dissected to the to the maximum effort. That is that too is something I just explained. I mean, yeah, we want to be good right now. Right now, five minutes ago, but we can't. Any questions? <laughs> Any questions? Any questions? <clears throat> like it, it seems to be it's like again to my to my thinking, right? I I thought about this stuff, right? The ego and the mind they want, right? What the mind can't see, what the mind and this is like the the logical compartment, right? We all use it right now to look at our screens and listen to our our things and thoughts and you listen to me, there is a, it can't really see the requirements, right? It just, it just wants it and it wants it right now because it has its reasons and it doesn't, it doesn't really see a reason to wait. So why wouldn't, why it doesn't see a reason to be patient, you know? So it may, it may see plenty of reasons to be impatient because it, it wants it, you know? And that too is, is, it's just weird. And I, I mean, in my, in my own experience and still wanting things, um, there was a time where I wanted it so much, I was drawing all day. And that is a 12 to 16 hour average across nine to 12 months plus. That is, that is wanting. And it is, it's not just, it's not just passion. You know, not to be confused, there is a, and it's it's something not everybody knows, right? Because like realizing what you want is is something very marvelous and something very precious. And it's not just wanting like the next computer piece or the next girlfriend or wanting to have sex. It's not about ego, you know? It's not about this kind of stuff. It's like in in life, in life, in, in existence, right? Where you know this is this is the one thing where you find fulfillment if not even like real fulfillment of full super hyper overcharged fulfillment you know yeah it's dry that is yeah like realizing how much you want things haha <laughs> leo gets purged that is where was there was no link wait what do you what do you say you talk about beans Oh, oh yeah, sex. Okay, get back, get wrecked. <laughs> it's, but, I mean, I have, I have memories of me realizing how much I want to draw. And it was basically a, I traveled through time. Like, I didn't really. So I was in my room contemplating reality of stuff and things. I was like 14, 15 years old. And I, I made a reality check. And un unconsciously, intuitively, however it worked, I asked myself, what would it be like being able to draw the things that I truly, really want to draw and express, right? And whatever, whatever happened in my brain, in my consciousness, in my brain chemistry, it was, it was thoroughly enlightening in terms of there is no way I can forget this. Right? There is no way I cannot know how much I want to draw and realize this kind of drive and passion. You know? It was a hard road. You know? It was definitely a hard road because it took 10 years for me to actually get there. To, to actually start the journey. And that was to some degree because I wanted things. I wanted to draw. I wanted it right now and it didn't work. So what was the, the natural conclusion was frustration. And frustration is usually not something that compels you to do more. And that too is, is like we want things to be easy so that we don't run into this kind of problem because, uh, it's like, it's, it's not recommendable. You know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't recommend anybody to be frustrated with things because it fulfills some kind of weird odd purpose. It doesn't. You know, frustration is still, 
in many cases a very logical consequence between me and my ego wanting this thing so much that I have zero kind of patience and zero kind of patience for learning so that all I can really get from practice is frustration. You know, and then again, it's like the, the, the measuring amongst my standards of wanting it to be right and awesome and super good and I want it to be the best without giving any time and paying any energy towards learning. You know, it's it's weird. <clears throat> I should I should slow my slow my pace down. Uh, I suppose I suppose when I'm when I don't talk and I usually don't for many days, which is fine. Um sometimes it just you know, it just comes out too fast. And this this too is my brain. Um, it's, it's stringing itself along these lines of thoughts, right? In a pace, my mouth and my words can't keep up. So I try to be very fast and say it all at once and blah, 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 you know, it gets, it gets completely tangled up. And I, I do like Alan Watts. I do like Alan Watts. <laughs> Any questions? Any questions? But yeah, patience, patience is a thing. Um, <clears throat> and the, the one thing, the one thing, um, I would put on the list that helped me keep up the drive is knowing how much I want it. You know, if you don't, if you don't want it and if, if it has like a, a lower priority, you don't continue and it's, it's okay. You know, eventually, we we have to realize in life that not all things have the kind of continuity and we, we all do things that we eventually stop, you know? Um Yeah. It's weird. <laughs> uh the the lines of thought sometimes they get lost. But there's uh, yeah, patience. Patience is is fascinating. Any questions? Any questions? And I suppose um, good, good amount of madness. Yeah, holy poop. I didn't mean to explode you guys for hours. Four hours of madness. Holy moly. Ah. <laughs> um. That too is a, is a fascinating question. Um, let's say, let's say the brain chemistry, the brain chemistry of my brain reacts to me creating 3D space and form. Seeing things, seeing things in a certain perspective, um, like, like many years ago when I had girlfriends and like I looked at their face in certain angles, like the way the form and the surface feels to my brain. It it it's it's also a dry, right? And I've I've no idea how and why um it exists, but myself, my ego wants to express itself. Um and even even if it's just for me, right? I could to, I could do this kind of stuff in my cave and never show anybody. But there is, there is something in it between, uh, or like, understanding something more or less thoroughly where you control the creation of an illusion that works like a drug to your brain. Right? That is, that is so weird. But there is a, there is a very particular feature of me drawing form in a specific way in my brain. Like my brain chemistry reacts to it. And all I as the human that I am can do is follow this stimulus. It's the same thing. People like guitar music. People like piano. Right? Some people like blonde. Some people like thick butt. Some people like short pants. And all this kind of stuff. So all we really do is follow the stimulus. You know, some people are aware. Some people are not aware. And I'd rather choose to be overly aware. And not underly aware, but that is a <clears throat> different thing. So there is a 
Um, I suppose there is there's something in it behind self-expression. Like there's something personal, there's something scientific, there's something uh, spiritual about any human entity expressing their self through art or music or mathematics or verbal linguistics and poetry and this kind of stuff. Um, no, I lost, I lost the thought. I had it. I had it. Now it's gone. Um, it wasn't, okay, self-expression is the one thing. No, I lost it. It was, it was a good thought. It's gone. Yeah, it's gone. <laughs> Maybe I remember in a in a short while. I was um Deleuze's Rhizome philosophy. Uh it remind I don't know what this is, but it reminds me of something else. Uh, let's see if I can pull this up. It's it's like a mathematical concept. And all I really did is I watched some videos on YouTube and it was in my suggestion list, right? The the channel is number file. Where it's like a compilation of highly intelligent, super crazy smart mathematic people. So there was a video, and it's about Gödel's incompleteness theorem. Watch it if you want to go completely insane. And I have no idea what these people are talking about. And because I don't understand it, it is so fucking fascinating. Excuse the language, it's super fascinating. It is, it is brain breaking, this kind of stuff. You know, it's absolutely nuts. Okay, that was, that was it. That was it. There's some, I'll post some links. Thank you guys for watching, lurking, hanging out. Uh, link, art book. There's links you can click, art books you can buy, support you can give, stuff and things. Thank you guys for watching, lurking, hanging out. <clears throat> oh god, Leo was it good madness. I suppose it was good madness, but you don't have to. You don't, you don't need to. I go sleep now. <laughs> I go sleep now, okay. Permit Mac Yavelli. There you go. Possibly uh, if I if I feel insane enough I will stream tomorrow. Um otherwise I will go sleep. Sleep is good. I mean, I'm saying don't throw money at me. It's it's the sensible thing to say because I can't say give me more, otherwise I take it. I love support, so I can I can produce more madness. That's that's the thing, right? I don't get rich. I don't fly off to Mexico in my yachts and planes, but I can pay the bills and stuff. Otherwise, I will be back. Enjoy the madness. Enjoy the madness. Um, I hope it was enlightening or confusing. Um, maybe a little bit of both. And all of all of the above at once. I shall be back. I shall be back. Oh madness. Patron is still fine, but I, I get it. It's it's fine. Patron patron takes like a very tiny percentage. So I don't really mind. Thank you guys for watching. I'll play some ads and then be quiet and go nap and sleep and contemplate more coverage tomorrow. Um, there's there's more. There's one more thing. There is an actual mathematic thing for space coverage analysis. Um, um, I only know this from some video about 
um, relativity theory from Einstein and he had a colleague that was doing this kind of stuff. I will link a Google link and look look at the images. Look at the images. It is complete madness. It is complete and utter madness. Right there, there are these these weird looking twisted things and they fold into itself and then they still make a coherent surface. And like the amount of mathematics that goes through the stuff, like the Mobius strip, right? It's complete, more or less simple. I get it, right? It's, it's completely insane. You know? It's completely insane. And they too, they too talk about like points and space and lines and curvature and then you have all this complex mathematic formula and stuff. I love it, even though I don't understand it. And still, like, it's, it's nuts. It's completely nuts. I'll show you one thing. Look, it, it, this is what I do. Look, points in space, and then you have curvature, and there's a plane, and space form volume stretch stuff. <clears throat> I just don't do the math. I do it in my head. Yeah. <laughs> it's completely insane. It's completely insane. Anyway, uh, thank you guys again. Um, I was, I, it's fourth time now. I say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Bye, bye, bye. Bye, guys. Love you, guys. I shall be back. I hope the madness was enlightening, not too confusing. I hate goodbyes. I hate goodbyes. See, and even, even just pressing the button and going offline would, wouldn't make me feel better. Okay, I'll put this. Oh, I actually, look, I even made a real arts. Real arts. Okay. Bye, everybody. I will be back. And get some, get some rest and candies and sleep and let me sleep and quiet and more quiet. And <laughs> Not contemplating geometry. Both a good. I you buy the goodbye. It's out of stock. Like Nvidia GPUs. Anyway. <laughs> see you guys. See you guys soon. I shall be back. And I will, uh, I will practice, I will practice short goodbyes. That's, that's a good practice one.